Welcome to the 28th lecture in mechanics of materials. Till now we have solved two kinds of boundary alley problems. One involving an axial member wherein the axial stresses were uniformly distributed across the cross section. The second was a beam problem, bending problems wherein we had both the axial stresses and shear stresses coming in the cross section. We saw how to compute the actual stresses in the cross section which will vary linearly across the depth of the cross section and then we saw that the shear stresses will vary parabolically across the depth of the cross section for certain types of cross sections. Okay. So basically now we will move on from bending problems to twisting problems wherein we saw even bending problems that there will be a torsional moment or twisting happening in the cross section the load is not applied through the shear center of the cross section. right? Okay, so now we look at what happens when the load is not applied to the shear center of the cross section or when there is twisting. We will not go into uh, the specific case of load not being applied to the shear center, but we will look at uh, problems, simple problems in twisting where you have a shaft which is rotating at a, some RPM or uh, uh, you are applying a twisting moment uh, to a beam due to the eccentrically applied load and so on. Okay. Now, in contrast to what we have been seeing till now wherein the predominant stresses were the actual stresses, now the predominant stresses are the shear stresses in the cross in the in the structure. Okay. Now due to twisting what happens is you have a bar which you twist by applying twisting moment at one end. So, you can see it forms kind of an helix kind of a shape here. Okay. So, this is what happens when you apply a twisting moment to a bar. Okay. That is I am fixing this end and I am rotating this section and then this bar is getting twisted. Okay. So, what happens now is two sections which are like this rotates related to each other. Okay. Two sections which are like this rotates related to each other producing a shear stresses in the plane of the cross section and we are interested in finding what these shear stresses are in the plane of the cross section. Okay. Now, to analyze this. Uh, I am going to now change the coordinate system from what I have been using till now to a different coordinate system. This is just to make you conversant that uh, any coordinate system that you use you have to be able to uh, adapt to a different coordinate system in a problem. Okay. So, till now we have been using x, y, z over in a particular fashion, but now I will orient the x, y, z in a different manner. Okay. I have this cross section and for me now z is the axis of the beam, y still remains the vertical, but the x is oriented like this. Okay. So, this is the axis that I am going to use. Now, what is the what was the torsional moment in case of the axis oriented like when the x was oriented along the axis of the beam, the moment along x direction was the torsional moment and moment along z direction was the bending moment. On the other end now the moment along the z axis is a torsional moment and moment along the x axis is the bending moment. Okay. Now, we have to find the expression for the torsional moment when the uh, orientation is like this. So, as I did before for the bending moment I cut a section expose the traction along the z direction and find what is the torsional moment. Okay. So, now T of E z I am not going to go into step by step procedure you have to refer back to our first lecture in beam bending where we did this with respect to x to get this expressions T e z will be given by sigma x z e x y z e y plus sigma z z e z. Okay. Now, uh, at a given cross section I want to find the moment due to this exposed traction. So, the moment equation would be r cross t of e z integrated over d a d a z now because a z is the uh, z is the axis of the beam. Okay. So, now, now in this case r would be now it will be a z r would be x c x plus y e y. I am not bothered about z in this case because I am interested only in the torsion moment. Okay. 
other side would have plus z naught e z okay cross sigma x z e x plus sigma y z e y and I am also going to ignore sigma z z e z because I am not interested in the actual stresses either okay I assume there are no actual stresses in this case d a z. So, this will be integral x sigma y z minus y sigma x z d a z a z e z this is the torsional moment m z moment this is the torsional moment or this is the torsional moment in the b ok. Now, let us assume that I fix this n for torsion and I am applying a torsional moment t here ok. The double arrow indicates the torsional moment ok when applying a torsional moment t in there and I am interested in finding what will be the stress distribution in this structure ok. Now, as always what we do we start with the displacement field we start with the displacement field use the same displacement relationship to get the strain use the constant relation to get the stress equilibrium equations to get the forces or moments or whatever unknown displacement component that we add ok. So, to assume a displacement field you have to hypothesize on a possible mode of displacement ok. So, towards that what we are going to do is we are going to see what happens when I twist a bar ok. So, when I twist a bar and I fix this end and I twist the bar like this apply a torque T like that then what happens to a straight line here what happens to the straight line there ok. This straight line is now going to deform into an inclined line essentially an inclined line because I am assuming the displacement are small we saw that uh, when we derive the strain we always assume that the component of displacement is small displacement gradient is small. So, that I can do whatever I am doing right I can use a linearized strain measure to do the calculations. So, since the displacements are small unlike what I showed in the beginning of this lecture where the displacements were large where you can see the displacements now you cannot see the displacement and hence when the displacements are small you can assume that the straight line deforms in to another straight line like that ok which is inclined basically since it is fixed at the end a since it is fixed at the end a that tend will will not rotate the uh, the section which is farther away from the fixed end will rotate more and more as the length increases ok. So, basically let us assume that this rotation is given by omega ok let that rotation be alpha then at any section this rotation of the cross section from year to year would be this rotation would be alpha times z again I am assuming that the rotation is small. So, I can write this as alpha times z ok because my axis is again oriented along this is the z distance my axis of the beam is oriented along the z axis ok this is the z distance. So, that will be alpha times z now let us look at the cross section what happens I have some arbitrary cross section ok I have x and y in the cross section this is the surface of the cross section what you see as the elevation. So, basically what happens to a line element this line element is it rotates into it rotates goes in there ok where this rotation is alpha times z ok and if this angle were to be beta ok this angle were to be beta and if this real distance were to be capital R if this distance were to be capital R then beta times R capital R should be equal to alpha times z right ok. Now, then beta would be alpha by R into z ok this alpha by r is called we will replace that symbol as 
omega z and this alpha is called as angle of twist per unit length ok. Now this is what has happened in the process what has happened is a point which is here a point which is here has moved to a point here has moved to a point there. So, it has a u x displacement and it has a u y displacement which you have to find ok. Again since beta is small I wrote it as beta times r which means this distance is beta times r ok. So, I know that this distance is any point interior also will be beta times r this uh, some point in here which is at a distance of r small r ok. So, that will be that displacement ok. Now, that displacement I have to resolve into u x and u y displacement basically I, by assuming this displacement as beta times r I am approximating the uh, arc of a circle to the secant length the arc length to the secant length ok. So, now I am interested in finding this distance this distance and this distance and what I know is I know that this makes an angle theta and this distance is r ok. If that distance is r and this is 90 degrees I know this is 90 degrees ok then I can say that this angle would be theta right because this angle is theta this angle is theta by power lines ok and this angle will be 90 minus theta and that angle will be theta ok. So, this distance here would be given by beta r into cos of theta right and this distance here would be given by beta r into sin of theta ok. Now, so u x component of a displacement that is a negative displacement it moves opposite to the orientation of the axis hence it is minus beta r sin theta r this is minus omega z r sin theta is nothing but y r sin theta is this distance y ok. So, that is minus omega z y. Similarly, u y displacement is given by beta r cos theta this is a positive displacement because it is displacing along the direction of the coordinate system ok and this will be omega z substituting for beta and r cos theta is nothing but x ok r cos theta is nothing but x this distance is x and this distance is y and hence that is what you got as u x and u y displacement ok. You are assuming that there is no displacement along the z direction u z is 0 because I am assuming that there is no warping essentially ok. What I am assuming is there is no warping or there is no out of plane displacement and hence u z is 0. Putting all this together you get your displacement field u to be minus omega z y e x plus omega z x e y ok. Because you assume no warping in other sense what you are doing is you are doing deriving an equation for what is called as a closed section ok. Assuming closed section implying no warping 